Howdy folks, you're watching Deuce. I'm down on the farm and it's a good opportunity for me to test out the reasoning or the theory I have with why my new Canic pistol doesn't shoot. Now I used a no shoot target here because I want it to really stand out and that is the fact that the bullet is tumbling. There's the first shot. It is beautifully round hole. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. And here's the second shot. Oblong. That means that bullet is going through the target sideways. And that is not the way it's supposed to be. Alrighty guys, my apologies. I had to swap over to the GoPro because it started raining on me. Wasn't supposed to rain for another couple of hours, but here we are. We'll see if I can save some of this video here. But the issue with my Canic pistol is the fact that it's tumbling my cast lead bullets, which, okay, some people will just sit there and scream at the screen, we'll get better at casting bullets, get better at reloading, what have you. These are the exact same cast lead bullets that I have been using for over 20 years through my Glocks, including Glock factory barrels. I know you're not supposed to shoot lead cast bullets through Glock uh, factory barrels, but I do and have been doing it successfully for 20 years as, as my competition round here. So here is what I have been shooting, both lead cast bullets that are tumble lube right there and powder coated as well. Let me load up 10 rounds of the new stuff here, the plated bullets and see how they run in the Canic. Of course, I was down here on the farm actually doing work because that's what I do down here. You ever notice when uh, you see some YouTubers that have the so-called rough and tumble life or you know professional whatevers out in the bush or out in the wild or whatnot, and you never see them dirty. <laughs> you never see them dirty. You never see them on in their work clothes, their work environment. You never see them with a truck full of junk where they've been working all day. You never see them with a scar on their face or anything or or a bloody patch like I got in my head because I hit, well, there was a tree branch that disagreed with my uh, cutting down the tree. I don't have a screen to look at through my GoPro because it's an older one. So uh, hopefully I'm in frame. <laughs> this may be completely a uh, wash of a video and I'm going to be throwing this out. Who knows? But here we go. Ten rounds. All right. Man, my arms are tired. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's take a look at those real quick. Now you can see all of those are beautiful circular holes. The 147 grain bullet traveling at roughly, I've got it loaded down to about 900 feet per second, is a very soft shooting, very pleasant round to, um, to fire out of the canic, out of the five inch barreled canic. Now, I've never had this happen before, but I am very aware and have seen other people have issues with not meeting the minimum power factor during competition. And a lot of times it is a, it is a very sad day for them because they have a thousand rounds loaded in that and it's not usable. <laughs> Technically 147 grain bullet, you can drop that down to about 850 feet per second. Nope, don't do it. Don't do it, just bump it up just a little bit, 50 extra feet per second, and that gives you some leeway just in case some powder is not quite as strong as the previous batch. Or if your powder dropper is a little bit finicky, like say you're using a, a Lee Progressive Press, like I do. Now let's put some more lead cast bullets through, uh, through the Canic, and we'll see if I can get you a good demonstration of what I'm talking about there with the tumbling. So in competition, everybody knows I reload and everybody knows me in the competition circuit locally. So if they start seeing a bunch of keyholes in my targets after I'm done shooting the, uh, shooting the course, then um, that's gonna look bad on me. That's gonna make me look like I don't know what I'm doing. Also, I shoot a ton of suppressed firearms. If I've got a tumbling bullet, and if it tumbles quick enough outside of that barrel, if it starts tumbling immediately outside of that barrel, then it can take out baffles, it's called a baffle strike, where the bullet impacts the inside of your suppressor and it pretty much ruins your suppressor. I'm gonna focus these on the left-hand side of the target. Man, my arms are so tired from working today. 
Oh, that's a big one. Look at that sucker. Look at that. Holy crap. And then the next one, perfect. Another one. Okay. We're going to go ahead and stop that there because I don't need, I don't need any more evidence. I got plenty of evidence. Here's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Look, it almost looks like I stabbed it, <laughs> stabbed it with a knife. But no, that is a tumbling bullet. You saw it happen in real time. Now, here's an example of a bullet I pulled out of one of the cartridges here. And here is an example of how it's supposed to look like. The bullet went straight on and straight through that bullet hole perfectly. I'm assuming this bullet is sliding across the uh, grooves in the barrel. So it's not actually getting enough spin to stabilize. And it's hitting the target sideways just like that. And you can see that is a perfect... That is a perfect example of what I'm talking about there. For whatever reason, my particular mechanic just does not like cast lead bullets. It doesn't like tumble loop bullets. It doesn't like my powder coated bullets of the same style. It doesn't like powder coated bullets that are commercially made and sold. But it does like the copper plated bullets from Extreme. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going to have to buy that now, which really stinks because I have 1100 rounds right here of competition ammo that does not work in my new competition pistol. That stinks. So expect to see a lot of this stuff in my review videos coming up on any other nine millimeter pistol or carbine because I got to burn through this stuff somewhere else besides the competition range. All right, further testing just to make sure that it is all Good to go here with the plated bullets. All right, let's hit, let's go ahead and put them in the center there. Oh, this thing shoots so well. I just wish it would shoot my lead cast bullets. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that didn't, <laughs> that's me, not the gun, that's me. thing just works it just shoots and shoots and shoots some more not a single issue every single one of them is a nice circular hole with that pristine flower petal appearance of it going through the cardboard that's exactly the way it's supposed to look nothing like this garbage as I was diagnosing this issue I went through all kinds of iterations here I tried my tumble loop bullets did not like those. I tried my powder coated bullets and these are Lee 124 grain tumble loop bullet there. And I tried both a softer alloy and a harder alloy. And remember, these are what I use in my Glock factory barrel, which tells you something. And for you extra nerds out there, these cast lead bullets, my personal cast lead bullets, I mic out to three or 0.358 of an inch so it's a little bit larger than normal even for cast lead bullets because it does have that extra bearing surface on there that needs to squish down a little bit and really engage that rifling which is how i make it work in the glock barrel and it still wasn't enough my commercial bullets here that i bought these are cast lead bullets from black bull international i would show you the packaging but it has their web address all over it and youtube immediately thinks i'm trying to sell that stuff i'm not uh, they're perfectly fine bullets, but my mechanic did not like them either. They mic out at exactly uh, 0.356. These extreme bullets that I got to work here, again, I bought these with my own money years ago, actually, but these are 147 grain, and they're this slightly larger size that they offer. They offer both 0.356 and 0.357. These are the 0.357, and they work great in my mechanic. So if you're having stability issues with your mechanic rival pistol or any of the mechanic pistols, with your lead cast or your cheaper style ammos, go to a plated bullet that's slightly larger than normal, a 0.357 inch bullet. And that worked for me. It may work for you, but your mileage may vary. Unfortunately, I have 30 pounds of these bullets stored away. I may melt those back down and make 300 blackout bullets out of them because that's a lot of lead just to have sitting there for years and years as I slowly work through them. Well, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go subscribe. A lot more is on the way. Give me comments, questions, show ideas. Leave that in the comment box below the video. I'll try to answer as many of those as possible. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.